What's the hardest aspect of a really difficult video game? Usually the boss battles. And also convincing yourself, your family and your friends that failing to kill a screaming flesh monster a hundred times in a row is a good use of your valuable time on Earth. Yeah, sorry mum, I won't make this weekend, I'm just too busy. But we say usually the boss battles are the hardest part because sometimes, in a bizarre and frankly suspicious diversion from normalcy, a difficult video game will present us with a boss fight that is, frankly, not that hard. What the heck? I put aside a clear day for this encounter and it really isn't very tough at all. Hey mum, uh, looks like I can make this weekend after all. Oh come on, life with me is not a devastating emotional roller coaster. Here are seven weirdly easy boss fights in very hard games, but we're spoilers for the following. I don't know why people stress about spending dozens of hours trying to beat Dark Souls bosses. It's not that much time in the grand scheme of things. Not when you consider the average human lifespan is, what, 500 years? Actually, it's... It's what?! Oh no! Perhaps more than any video game series in history, the Souls games are infamous for challenging the player to beat spectacular and spectacularly tough bosses, usually at the end of a gruelling area that you've had to battle through. You don't expect any boss in Dark Souls to be straightforward, and certainly not one you find at the bottom of an area called the Catacombs, a hellish ever downward reaching network of caves filled with skeletons finding increasingly inventive ways to shred your body to ribbons. Ah, I do not want to meet their boss. You'll have to though, if you want to push on through the Catacombs to the next area of the game. And so, you drop into this candlelit, eerie tomb and gird your loins as area boss Pinwheel's cutscene introduction begins to play in a scene that clocks in at roughly 30 seconds. Which we mention only because this cutscene runs longer than the actual boss fight. About 30 times longer. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration, about as slight as Pinwheel's health reserves in fact. Because despite being a fully fledged Dark Souls boss, Pinwheel can be killed in the blink of an eye. His main trick is creating clones of himself to fool the player, which would probably be effective if he didn't do it so agonisingly slowly that it's extremely obvious which pinwheel is the real one. We'd list pinwheel's many other humorous failings, but frankly there's only so many seconds of game footage of this boss we have to play with and oh, oh, he's died. And here's me with all this unused pinwheel material. Hey, hey, why does pinwheel have three masks? Because if he had any more, you'd have to... Forget it, the moment's past. The Castlevania games are about fighting and killing Dracula and his legions of demonic forces. So it makes sense that they're pretty hard, because that sounds hard. Castlevania Bloodlines for the Sega Genesis is no exception, with difficult levels and bosses that will test your stabbing and jumping powers to the utmost. With one exception. That would be the boss encountered in the Atlantis Shrine stage of the game, known as the Wizard. To begin with, the wizard gives you the merest taste of his powers, teleportation. With shocking speed, he vanishes and reappears, and now here comes his attack. <clears throat> I said, here comes his attack. No, this actually is his attack. See, the wizard's whole thing is very slowly raising the water level and hoping you'll conveniently drown before you stab him to death. Which is very unlikely because the water rises very slowly and there's absolutely nothing else for you to do in the game right now but stab wizards. Of course that's only the first part of this boss fight. Isn't it? Surely? Uh, no? Okay. Okay? I guess we're done?
Donkey Kong Country 2 introduced millions of children to a crushing, unyielding level of difficulty that frankly left them well prepared to face life's challenges. Or psychologically destroyed, the evidence is unclear. While undoubtedly excellent, this challenging game will have you crushing your controller in a sweaty grip as you fight to clear its increasingly tricky environments. Boss fights are predictably difficult too. Here's the second boss fight in the game, which demands flawless precision jumping while dodging fireballs. At least, that's one of its phases. It's super weird then that one of the bosses you'll face in this gruelling platforming gauntlet is Cudgel, a remarkably straightforward boss encountered in the stage called Cudgel's Contest, where presumably the contest in question is how many barrels of dynamite Cudgel can take to the face without landing a single bit of damage on you. Cudgel's main attack is a leap that will briefly stun you if you're on the ground when it lands, which might have been scary if this wasn't a game about acrobatic apes that are almost never touching the floor. After easily dodging Cudgel's leaps, it's simply a matter of throwing the TNT barrel that Cudgel, we're gonna say foolishly, drops into the arena, right in his scaly face, and repeating this process until he quickly dies. No burning through your spare lives here, Cudgel will soon be beaten, and you'll be boomboxing insensitively in front of his drowned corpse in no time. A crocodile died, did he? Show some respect. Now, easy in Cuphead is a relative term, because honestly, the only part of this retro-animated rock-hard run-and-gun game that's easy is the pause menu, and I wouldn't be surprised if we've screwed that up a few times too. <laughs> Cuphead's crowning glory is of course its boss battles, which require immense persistence, practice and memorization to get through. On top of remembering every single attack on screen, you'll have to dodge, parry and place your character with pixel-perfect accuracy to make it through. And as the game progresses, the battles only get more complex. Which means there's something slightly odd about the boss Verna Vermin. I mean, apart from the fact that he's a cigar-smoking rat who drives a soup can around like a tank. The consensus among Cuphead players is that Verna, encountered a fair distance into the game, is a surprisingly straightforward boss. The battle begins with you dodging crap hurled down from his soup can tank, avoiding dangerous bombs and nailing parry jumps to dodge his manic charges across the screen. If you think that sounds hard, you're right. But it's not like Cuphead hard. Verna's next move is to deploy a flamethrower and spinning bottle cap blades, which can finish your fight in moments if you're not careful, but compared to the absolutely hat stand boss fights found elsewhere in this game, doesn't require too much practice to figure out. Finally, Vermin is eaten by the cat that's been peering into his little box house since the fight started, and then you fight the cat who is presumably now full and sleepy because he only has a few attacks to dole out, in the climax to a boss battle that's puzzlingly simple by Cuphead standards. Not that we're complaining. <laughs> when the cat's been dealt enough damage, the fight is over, and its face, wait, pops off? To reveal Verna Vermin at the controls? What? Good thing this boss fight doesn't take too long, because that does not stand up to much scrutiny. Hollow Knight is absolutely brutal. Just look at this typical player. <laughs> Just heard Silk Song got delayed again. <laughs> there are many challenges you'll have to face if you want to fully conquer this sprawling, bug-themed Metroidvania adventure, from getting lost to the equally pressing worry of getting murdered. <laughs> Meanwhile, the game's boss fights are famous tests of reflexes, timing, patience and bloody-minded endurance, and Hollow Knight doesn't F about setting the tone. Consider the False Knight, the first boss most players will encounter. This hulking, smashing beetle bastard crashes in from the ceiling when you first step foot in his arena, making clear exactly what kind of game this is. The Gru's Mother boss makes a much more subdued first impression. 
seeing as when you enter her arena, likely a short while later in the game, she doesn't smash through the ceiling. Instead, she's lying asleep in the corner, visibly knackered. Hard same, Gru's mother. If you do jab her into starting the fight, her main attack is flying straight at you and uh, bouncing around the screen like a furious DVD screensaver. Wait, don't hit her. I think she's about to hit the corner. Weirdly, considering the game she's in, the Gru's mother isn't as fearsome as she looks, and once you've figured out how to dodge out the way and jab her with your sword, is dispatched with extreme ease compared to her fellow bosses. Just a few hits, a few dodges, and she dies. And then, moments later, explodes because it turns out the Gru's mother bug was pregnant with seven children. Which, to be fair, explains the exhaustion. There are over 130 games in the Mega Man series, which means Mega Man can claim the title of most tired person in video games, a title I myself had hoped to retain for a tenth year running. From the first second to the last, Mega Man games are generally exhausting. A non-stop barrage of killer robots and environmental obstacles that will send you on a one-way train to Game Oversville if you so much as blink. Interestingly, Mega Man X lets you attempt its levels in any order you like, and most players choose to do Snow Mountain first. Why? Is it because they like being run over by snowballs and murdered by those novelty drinking bird desk toys? No, it's because there's a valuable suit upgrade in here, and also the boss is a piece of piss. Which is a very, very unusual accusation to level at a Mega Man boss, but here we are. The boss of this zone is Chill Penguin, who sadly isn't as relaxed as he sounds, turning the floor of this boss room into a death trap filled with hurled ice chunks, deadly ice sculptures, and most alarmingly, Chill Penguin himself torpedoing into you. Oh, this boss fight could be easy. If only there was a way to not be on the floor. Oh, hang on, I'll just do that. Yes, by spamming Mega Man's wall jump, it's really straightforward to stay well clear of basically all Chill Penguin's moves. Then, at your leisure, nail him in the beak with a charged up laser. This beats Chill Penguin in no time, with the only downside being, now you have to go do the other seven bosses, none of whom are such pushovers. Unless, of course, you just decide the game ends here. What? They said I could choose whatever order I wanted. Well, I choose Chill Penguin, then nothing. I am the mega -ist man. Roll credits. If I had to choose one word to describe Bloodborne's bosses, it would be... Howling. In terms of sheer brutality and intimidation, very few games can compete with the bosses on offer in this gore-soaked RPG, where a great number of major enemies are huge, hairy, and clawing at you furiously while looking absolutely terrifying. And also, this big funny alien is there. Meet the Celestial Emissary, one of many funny jelly aliens encountered in the game's Lumen Flower Gardens, who have several attacks, but the main one is to run at you like toddlers with jam on their hands. One of these tottering ETs is the larger Celestial Emissary in disguise, and once identified will go all big and start stamping on you, which is unpleasant but really not very intense by Bloodborne standards. Whittling the Emissary's health bar down doesn't require much luck or strategy or even damage, leaving Bloodborne players somewhat baffled and with a surprisingly low heart rate as the fight reaches its unexciting conclusion. It's not easy, per se, but in a game like Bloodborne, well, let's just say that dying to the Celestial Emissary is a mark of terrible shame for any player. Oh, whoa, okay. Weakest boss in the game, says Fletch underscore four, just as you were doing well. It's a pain that never goes away. Hardest boss in the game right here, confirmed. Ow, ow. So those are some of the easy, like weirdly easy boss battles in otherwise 
particularly hard games? Can you think of any? Let us know in the comments. In fact, can you think of like the opposite as well? Like really hard uh, bosses in otherwise easy games, like those ones that you get to and they're just like an absolute brick wall and you're like, why game? Why? Uh, we can uh, rant about it in the comments and maybe make a video on that as well. Uh, but in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to support us, you can subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to go one step further, you can join our Patreon, where you can also uh, have access to our Discord, where we can complain about boss ba battles there as well. That'd Tell be fun. Tell about the apes, and, <laughs> Yes, and then also, in the meantime, we've also got some other lovely videos for you here, both with apes on the thumbnail, yeah. because Luke likes apes and monkeys and the More like. More ape content. 